I jump into a race car, uh, a lot of my confidence comes from whether I'm prepared or not. If I've done my homework and I know what I'm up against, then I'm at ease, my shoulders are down and my head's up. Uh, there's other times the speeds are high and the weather's bad and that's when you sort of walk with a hunch back and grip the wheel tight and those are the times where you make your, your salary. That's when it's not about enjoyment, it's really about buckling down and uh, gritting through it. You know, Patrick, the, these cars, the throttle are made just uh, zero and full, girl, no? to, uh, to, to hold it in half, girl, no? that's, that's not really made for this. respect when modern racing drivers that drive modern race cars suddenly are confronted with old technology. They didn't have any of the electronic controls that modern race cars have, so it was a completely different discipline. So I think when you can combine those two very different types of race cars, still very fast race cars, but very different, it gives the drivers a real appreciation for the heritage behind what they're driving. You know, Rensport is really, it's, it's people and it's cars. And when you can combine the people with the cars in an atmosphere like California, and an atmosphere like Laguna Seca, that's really special. And there's lots of other tracks all over the, the country that, that have facilities that could house uh, something like Rensport, but nowhere do we have that sort of built-in audience. The best part of an event like Rensport is it brings out the best cars and the best drivers from that era and they get out and run those cars really hard. To, to think back and, and wonder what it was for Vic Elford, Brian Redman, Hurley Haywood, what it was like to run these cars as hard as they did at night in the rain, to share the racetrack with them as, as a young guy that wasn't even alive when these cars were in their heyday, that's just a fly on the wall experience that I've always savored. <laughs>